Hello and welcome back to the top 85 games for the BBC Micro video countdown series. In at number 29, it's Crazy Rider. I'm sure a lot of you will have been waiting for this game to appear, and it finally has. Uh, this was released in 1987 by Superior Software, and it was developed by Kevin Edwards. Uh, Kevin has uh, a big presence on Twitter. Um, some of you will know that not only uh, does he um, share lots of pictures and, and images and, and uh, content from back in the day, but he's also published the source code for Crazy Rider. And you can actually go to his GitHub page and download the original 6502 assembler code for the game and, and have a poke around and see how it worked. Uh, but this isn't a programming video series, uh, we're really going to focus on the game here and what an amazing game it is. Um, I know that uh, some people gave me a bit of flack uh, on the channel for bringing revs in as low as I did and might be surprised to see another racing game coming in uh, much higher. And it's true, I'm not a big fan of driving games generally, but when it comes to Crazy Rider, um, I make a very noble exception, because I think it's a great game. It's not just a driving game, I think that's probably part of the appeal. Um, it's, it also involves being able to hit people off their motorcycles, um, and I think that extra dimension to it is what really makes it work for me. Uh, it's a really, really fast game. Uh, it was released for the Electron as well, and was actually the only 3D racing game of, of note uh, that existed on the Electron back then, uh, and it really pushed the boundaries of the Electron. Uh, but it's just as good on the Beeb, uh, and in fact there was even an enhanced version that came out for the Master as well, and we will take a look at that too. Um, that was something that Superior did uh, towards the sort of tail end of the 80s. Uh, when the BBC Master came out, they would release enhanced versions of their games, um, like Strikers Run and others, and uh, Crazy Rider is, uh, is another example. Anyway, um, that's probably enough by way of introduction, and now we're going to dive in and have a look at the game itself. Okay, let's load it up. Here we are, written by Kevin Edwards. So there are six race tracks that you have to uh, try and qualify in. You can see them there. Um, and uh, if you manage to qualify, you can then skip ahead to those race tracks. But we'll see how I get on. Uh, I'm not too bad at the game. Um, Considering it's a racing game. Oh, look at that splash screen art, by the way. That is fantastic. Really, really impressive. Um, yes, I'm, I'm not too bad at the game, so we'll see how uh, how far we can get in terms of qualifying. All right, so the first track is Le Mans, as you can see. Or Le Mans, if you're uh, going to put on a French accent. And here we go. Um, so it's, uh, it's quite a harsh game as far as the starting position is concerned, because although you technically start first... Every other rider in the game will just zoom ahead of you as soon as you, um, as soon as you basically the, the, the traffic lights go to green. So you really have to play quite a bit of catch up. Um, now you can see that when I knock to the side of these riders, uh, I get a little token. You can see up in the top right there, um, you get um, one token per hit basically. But you do have to be careful how you hit the other drivers because if you hit them at slightly the wrong angle, uh, you actually slow down, and if you rear end them, you completely crash. Um, the game's fairly unforgiving. If you do crash, uh, as I have just done, <laughs> you uh, don't stand much of a chance of qualifying. Um, it, really unfortunately, although you can keep driving, uh, one crash is pretty much it. Um, you're, you're unlikely to qualify as a result, but uh, we'll keep going anyway, because obviously the game does let us carry on. Um, I mean, just take a look at the actual graphics here. I mean, the way that the track moves and that amazing uh, sort of mountain landscape there, it really, really does give the impression that you are driving along a racetrack in 3D. Um, and I mean, the way that it manages all of these other bikes here as I'm... Oh, there we go. didn't quite manage to time that very well. Um, the way that it manages to sort of support as so many other uh, motorbikes on the track, as well as obviously your own one, is just so impressive. Ooh, hairpin bend. Oh, it's quite tight. Um, and it is really, really responsive as well. I mean, you can pretty much... If you want to get good at the game, you have to know... The maximum miles per hour um, on a given bend and that's really how you how you get good at this uh, you just have to memorize yeah I can go up to 138 miles per hour let's say on a given bend um, and then really you just have to push it as far as you can before you start screeching across the road um, now this track is uh, obviously the first one it's one of the easier ones because it doesn't have too much in the way of bends and it gives you plenty of straight track to try and improve your overall position now I'm at 18 out of 60 here, 15, 14, 30, I don't think I'm going to be able to make up enough to be able to qualify on this run, um, because I unfortunately had that crash earlier which really was, uh, yeah, spelt the end I think, 
So yeah, coming up to the finish line, no, that's it. That little jingle there was the sound that I've reached the end. Um, 14th, that's not going to be enough to qualify, unfortunately. But never fear, um, we will give it another try. You get quite a lot of bonuses, obviously, for managing to knock the other motorbikes. So it is worth your while if you're playing for a high score. You really do want to whack as many of them as you can. But obviously it comes with a risk, because if you don't quite get it right... Oh, there you go. It's quite good to hit quite a few of them on this uh, starting point. I don't know if you heard that squeaky sound there. That's where you don't quite hit them, and that actually causes you to slow down. Um, so, yeah, you have to really position it correctly. But, um, I mean... I don't know, there's, some, there's something about this game, uh, I remember it, I have very strong memories of playing it uh, as a child, and I've, I've continued playing it over the years, and as I say, for a, for a racing game uh, in 8-bit, it is, it just really purrs along, I mean, it's just such a great game, um, it, <laughs> I don't know, I, 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 as I say, I imagine some people obviously do think that, um, it com you know, compares very favourably with Revs, and I know that uh, I'm not as big a fan of Revs myself, but I think perhaps it's the... Maybe it's to do with the combination of apparent simplicity of the controls. You know, it isn't a complex game, this one. You, you really have just got the left, right, accelerate, brake um, to, to work with. That's There's nothing else. Um, but within that, it really does open up a very, very impressive racing game. Uh, and I, I just think it really, really moves, um, as you can see. And it, it, it's got a, it's got a learning curve. There's no doubt about that. Um, certainly, when I was a child, I'm not sure if I ever got past Le Mans, to be honest. I mean, I used to enjoy playing it, but I was pretty woeful. Uh, and it's only really been in later years that I've managed to qualify and get to play on some of the later, some of the later tracks. Um, I think we're doing pretty well here. We've got 12 hits up at the top right there, and we're in 8th position with a fair bit of the track left to make up some distance. There we go. Oh, 3rd position now. That's really not too shabby at all. Uh, I can't quite remember what rank you need to come in in order to qualify. I mean, you really do need to sort of gun for first if you want to be certain. But I think it does let you qualify if you come in the top... I want to say the top five. I'm not 100% sure about that. Well, we'll find out because I'm in fourth. And I think that this will be enough. Fingers crossed that we've qualified on fourth. Let's find out. I like the way they all slow down at the end there. Track completed. Hits bonus. Oh. And there's an excellent jingle there. Now, uh, those of you with uh, good ears will know that that jingle is from Martin Galway, who uh, produced some of the best, if not the best, uh, music for the Beeb back in the day. Not just for the Beeb, actually. He's, he's famous across a number of different uh, platforms, but certainly his music is it has a certain uh, distinct sound to it, and uh, yeah, you can hear it there in that jingle. Now we're on Andustrup, I think is how you say it. Uh, this is a much trickier track. As you can see, it's got much more uh, in the way of bends. Um, it does still give you a reasonable amount of uh, straight track to, to make the distance. Uh, but yeah, it's, it, it starts you off in quite a snakish way. So, oh dear, I've crashed. See, so, yeah, rules of Crazy Rider being what they are, I don't think I'm going to qualify now, even though I've still got quite a lot of the track to go. That crash will have cost me quite dearly. Um, coming in at 55th at this stage, I think I would have needed to have made up quite a bit more distance. Um, but yeah, just looking at the track there, it's very reminiscent of the way that um, the uh, the road moves in Sphere of Destiny, albeit that this one actually also comes with bends and curves as well. But um, it's giving that um, that effect of the of you moving across um, across the track uh, by cycling those red and white uh, dashes along the sides. It's very impressive and is very effective. Um, and the way that the horizon shifts as well, I mean, that's the other thing. It is, that's not a static horizon there. Look at how, as the track bends, the horizon moves as well. I mean, it, it's so well put together. I mean, there's a reason why this game was, uh, you know, incredibly popular back in the day. I, I think I'm right in saying it, it actually had uh, even greater popularity on the Electron, just because it was the, it, it, it had been written, I think, I think I'm right in saying it was written for the Beeb and also then ported to the Electron, but... The Electron port was really, really impressive, uh, given the you know the, the the slight limitations in comparison to the Beeb that the Electron had. 
Um, Crazy Rider really performed just as well, I think. Um, if you do a side-by-side -side comparison of them, it, it's still just as fast and just as in, just as an enjoyable a game to play. Well, we're coming in at 14, 13th, 12th, 11th, 10th. This is not too shabby, but 10th is not going to be enough to qualify, and I don't think I've got enough straight road here to... Oh, I've gone down to 11th, 12th, 13th. Oh, no. No, I'm not going to qualify on this. No, I don't think 9th is enough. It's a hard taskmaster, is Crazy Rider, and unfortunately if you don't qualify, uh, you can't then move on to the next track. Uh, the way the game's developed, uh, if you do qualify on all of the tracks, you can then um, choose which one you want to skip to, all the while you've got the game running, obviously. Just pop myself into the high school. I love those names, by the way. <laughs> um, okay, well, what we're going to do is a little bit of creative editing, because um, I have qualified on that track before, so... We're going to pretend <laughs> that I've just come in first. Hope that uh, doesn't uh, doesn't bother too many people. For the, there's a bit of continuity there. So we've qualified on Anderstrop. Let's uh, ignore the uh, previous attempt, and we're now on Paul Ricard. So Paul Ricard, another French racing track. This one is deceptive. It looks like it's quite a straightforward track. If you look at it, it doesn't look like there's too many bends or hairpins going on, but. It's it's actually it's actually trickier than it appears, um, and uh, I yeah I have again I've qualified on it before, but we'll see whether I manage to make it this time. Um, it's not the uh, not the easiest, and that if you look at the end of the track as well, if you haven't managed to make a decent uh, de decent running by the end, you've got almost no opportunity to overtake anybody at that stage because uh, those those bends really kill you at the end. But uh, let's see, let's see how we get on. Any 54th at the moment, that's probably not where I need to be right now. But uh, anyway, let's just enjoy enjoy the game for what it is. Um, I like the colour palette for it as well. Uh, you may have noticed when the title screen came up, it was um, picked out in red and blue and white uh, and black, obviously. Those are the four colours. But uh, in this, uh, in this, we can see we've got the sort of green, red, white. Um, and a bit of cyan going on, on oh, yellow, obviously. Um, actually, I'm, I'm interested whether or not there's some kind of split screen or split screen mode going on because the use of cyan for the mountain tops, I think that pushes us over into more colours than than a, than the mode would support, unless it's a mode two game. And I'm not sure if it's, it might be a mode two game on the Beeb actually. Perhaps I'm thinking of the Electron edition where the the, the colour palette is limited to just the four colours. Uh, I know that um, a number of Kevin's games were written in Mode 2, so perhaps that's, that is the case, actually, for, for Crazy Rider as well. I should know these things, of course, but, uh, yeah, not 100% not sure. I'm sure someone in the comments will uh, correct me if I've got that wrong. Anyway, we're coming into the Homeward Stretch, and you can see now on this track, it really is, like, tight bends all the way now to the end, and the fact that I'm only 13th, I don't think I'm going to be able to make much of a, an advance on that because these bends don't really give you the option. See, oh, and I've timed my speeding wrong. All wrong, all wrong there. Oh, I've made it to 10th. Be lucky if I manage to keep that, to be honest. Oh, I really didn't time that very well. And that's it. Pretty much here, you haven't got any... There you go, 9th. Well, got it as far as 9th, I suppose, which isn't too bad. But uh, sadly, not enough to qualify. So, um, yes, I, I think it gets me into the high score table. Didn't manage to hit many riders this time. Haven't qualified. Um, I, well, I'm top of the high scores. There you go. I've beaten Mr. Gear, so that's not too bad. But I think, as before, we'll do a little bit of creative editing and uh, we will pretend that I did actually qualify on that track. Uh, and that hopefully will take us forward uh, to the next track in the series, which is actually one of my favourites, although it's. Um, Again, not not a track that is easy to easy to compete on. There we go. Another little jingle from Martin. Really do like that jingle. Uh, here we go. We're on Brands Hatch and a, a great UK racing circuit, of course. Um, and again, it it's it doesn't look like it's that tricky, but on Crazy Rider, it absolutely is. Uh, Kevin definitely picked the uh, the sequence of these tracks, I think, to ratchet up the difficulty the further the further along you go. And uh, the bends on this Brands Hatch match are Brands Hatch track. Sorry, I've got the tongue twister. Uh, are not 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 at all easy. So here we go, straight into a hairpin there. Only 58th at this stage. Really should have made up some more ground earlier on in the track. Um, 
Sound effects wise, in addition obviously to, to Martin's amazing music jingles, and we'll be hearing more of that actually on the master enhanced version, um, the, uh, the overall use of sound I think is very effective. The screeching as you as you are kind of accelerating too much and, and moving across the track from side to side is very very good, very effective. The crash sounds, good use of the white noise, um, and I love the little woo sound that you get uh, when you when you whack the side of uh, the driver as you go past. Now I know from uh, from following Kevin on Twitter that he's um, he's shared the uh, feedback that he got from Superior Software uh, when he first sent them the game. Oh, that's a nice nice few extra tokens there. Um, well, yes, when he first shared the game with them, um, I think I'm right in saying that it was Superior uh, that recommended that he makes some tweaks to the game to include the dynamic of being able to hit the other riders um, to kind of give the game a, a sort of something extra really and uh, I, I think it was a great touch because I think that it, it takes the game beyond well, so I hesitate to say just a driving game because it's a very impressive one in its own right but that extra um, sort of feel to it the extra ability to whack people off off their bikes, I think, just takes it to the next level, and it's a great, it's a great addition, a great addition to the game itself. I feel. Okay, well, we've come in 57th, which I think we can fairly safely say is not going to qualify me. Um, I do find this track quite difficult, so I think what we'll do is we will pivot across to the master enhanced version just after I pop my name into the high score table. Uh, because it's definitely worth taking a look at that one, um, if only for Martin's great, uh, great music, um, which I really enjoy in the uh, enhanced edition. So we will uh, come out of the micro edition. There you go, Acorn 1770 DFS. That uh, gives us a clue that we're on the master now. Uh, same splash screen, but you get the choice of an enhanced version here, which we're going to definitely play. Takes a little bit longer to load. You can see some uh, some use of video memory there to load up some of the uh, extras uh, here we go now there we are there's martin's uh, martin's theme tune for crazy rider which you don't get in the original um, and it's really quite jazzy i mean listen to that isn't that isn't that fantastic um, the other feature you get with the enhanced version is uh, you actually get to see a playthrough of the game uh, which i'm assuming is footage recorded by uh, kevin himself um, i don't actually know that for certain but Yes, you actually get um, you get to see what the game is like and, and how you can play it effectively, which is actually quite a good um, sort of tutorial, if you like, to, to see the, the miles per hour as, as he goes around the track. And I think it cycles across a number of different tracks as well, so you don't just have Le Mans, um, as you can see here. Uh, you also get to see some of the other tracks as well. But we're going to dive in now and actually give it a go, because there's one extra little feature in the Enhanced Edition which is rather fun. Um, it comes at my expense, but um, I'm fairly certain that we'll uh, we'll get to see it because uh, I'll I'll make sure that um, I don't play too well so that we get to see the uh, the effect because it's it's rather amusing. Um, you can see one of the other things is that the drivers uh, your your competitors are not just all the same colour now. You've got different mixtures, green and red. Um, there you go. <laughs> Isn't that great? I love it. You crash, you do a little somersault in the air, and then land neatly back in the uh, back in the uh, seat of your motorbike, and you can continue. Great, isn't it? Saddle, I should say, not seat. Dear, oh dear, you can tell I'm not much of a driver. Um, but yes, it's it's a nice little feature. I think it's um, you know it 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 just makes the game that little bit more fun um, because it you know at the end of the day it, it is a fun game. I mean, it's very very well programmed, and as a racing game, it works even without the sort of little idiosyncrasies. But I think it's those little quirks that really make Crazy Rider the game that it is. Um, and the marketing material as well for, for Crazy Rider, as well as the splash screen art and everything else, it really plays on the fact that this isn't just uh, about, you know, racing around a circuit um, in a strict rules-based environment. It's uh, it's very much encouraging you to, to play havoc on your, on your fellow riders. So, uh, yeah, really, really good stuff. Um, but yeah, other than that, I mean, other than the, the music, um, which we'll hear a little bit more of um, to play out the video at the end, um, and obviously that lovely feature where you, you sort of do a little somersault in the air, I don't think that there is much else uh, in the Enhanced Edition that's different. I say that, I'd, I've not... 
played much of the enhanced version because I didn't have it growing up. Um, I've only played it through emulation uh, in later years. And I tend to stick with the original version just because it's the version I know. So uh, please do leave me a comment if you've played the enhanced version more extensively, if you are aware of any other little features that it might come with that I'm not calling out here. Um, but I thought it was worth just giving a little uh, little run through because um, it is it is a nice uh, it is a nice version of the game, and uh, yeah, the, the extra variety of uh, in terms of the other riders as well, I think definitely helps give uh, the game the feel that you are racing against more than just a clone, <laughs> a cloned rider going around with you. Um, but there we go. Oh, and there's there you are. There's a finish line. You actually get a finish line on the track. That's the other bit that I forgot to say. Um, so that's that's another little extra in the enhanced version, which I, th I think is a, is a good addition. So that's the uh, track completed. Didn't qualify, as you can see, but picked up quite a few hit bonuses along the way. So uh, that puts me into the high score table, just just below Willie Win. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna play out with um, Martin Galway's music to to end out the video uh, with a little bit of the playthrough as well. Um, I hope that you'll agree with me that this is an outstanding game for the Beeb. Um, and as as far as racing games go, I think it is, in my opinion, um, the best racing game there is uh, for the Beeb and the Electron and indeed the Master. Um, it's it's for me it's uh, it's a real favourite. And as I say, for someone who doesn't typically play driving games, I get a huge amount of enjoyment out of this one and uh yeah really really great stuff from from kevin and uh a thank you from me for for all that uh, you've done kevin over the years in terms of sharing the materials as well i hope one day i might actually uh learn enough 6502 assembler to be able to make sense of the source code but um yeah it's a great it's a great thing to have done to have made that available um to the the acorn uh, bbc micro community and uh, I think I'll just end by saying, if you're not already following Kevin on Twitter, give him a follow. Uh, he posts some great stuff. Um, I really enjoy the content that he shares. And uh, I'm sure that if you're watching this video and you're on Twitter, you'll, you'll enjoy following him as well. So I'm going to leave it there and I'm going to let Martin Galway's excellent Crazy Rider theme tune play us out. Um, and I hope you'll join me for the next video in the series. And until then, goodbye. <laughs>